All right, what you're looking at is a Coleman PowerMate 1500. I just bought this off Craigslist. The fellow assured me it worked. It just needed a carburetor cleaned uh, for 60 bucks, and he saw me coming. Um, it did need a carburetor clean. It does start up and run real well, but there was no electric. Uh, there's no documentation for this generator out there anywhere. I'm going to be making documentation for it. I do have it running. It is a uh, capacitor regulator, and what I'm finding out is the capacitor is usually what's burned out. They've got a finite life to the capacitors. Anyhow, uh, what I did is I just substituted, and I'll show you this as we get into it, a uh, start capacitor off a, uh, a furnace motor. And I'm going to go ahead and order a brand new one because like I said that one's old. I don't know how old it is. This has a Kawasaki engine on it. It is rated at 1500 watts, 1200 running. Uh, once again, the documentation FA130D. There's a lot of documentation on the internet for that. For the AS10, I'm assuming that's the application generator versus snowblower. There is nothing. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by removing this side cover. I'm not going through the carburetor. I'll point out where the clogs were and it costs nothing to clean it out except you just have to get a piece of wire and strip it out so you can get through the little tiny ports. Okay, there's supposed to be four screws that hold this front cover on. Uh, right, when there's a little hog that we'll have to weld that in and drill it back out. Uh, the on-off switch, basically you're going to see that just goes straight to ground to shut it off. And the uh, reset switch, that's just wired on the uh, 12 volt side. Let's turn this around so you get a look at it. Uh, there's one modular connector here. Uh, as you can see, there's a white wire and a black wire on the outside. That's your 120. That is your 120. And the two in the middle are your 12 volt. The two yellow wires you see coming out, which I've spliced into, those go to a, let me double check, make sure I don't tell you the wrong thing. 7.5 microfarad capacitor. The stock one is plus or minus 5%. When we should get inside, I'll show you that's where that had normally mounted. That's why the screws, that's why the wires are that long. Once again, you're not going to find the parts for it. This works fine. I put this on, start producing electricity easy. It's just this one's old, and so I'm going to replace it. Those are usually less than $10. I like to buy the US belt ones. You can buy the cheap Chinese ones for five bucks, but I've got an using this for emergency generator. I wanted to start. Looking at the back of the electrical panel, there's your 110. There's your on off switch, single pull, double throw. One side is a light, the other side is your switch. There is the breaker for the uh, 12 volt. There is a resetting breaker for the 12 volt either as well. I believe that's 10 amp. And then there's the outlet for your 12 volts. Once you remove the front cover, like I said, just one modular connector and you're in. Let's look inside the rotor housing. Before I get started, what I neglected to tell you, um, that these are only 7 16 bolts to remove this. There's four on here, two, 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 and two. But to get to this top one on this side, you've got to remove uh, the muffler. And the muffler is held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. Yeah, you heard me right. 10 millimeter, 7 sixteenths. I believe in this is like a 1980s vintage, and that's where everything started, especially automotive, starts switching over to metric. So you got some metric, you got some standard English. I'm going to go ahead and remove the muffler and remove the cowling now. All right, then. I've removed the four case bolts. They are 7 sixteenths. And the case literally just lifts right off. There is a bearing. There is a bearing inside the case. And I'll go ahead and add some oil to that, grease into that while you've got it. You can also access the bearing through this little door in the back. 
the capacitor itself. See if it works out good. Yeah, the capacitor itself was some kind of little Japanese whatever. And it was actually mounted down here in the bottom of the case. So we took those two wires, those two yellow wires that went to the capacitor, spliced those in, and used the same value capacitor on the X side. It is imperative you use the same value capacitor, 7.5 microfarads. And the reason being is the amount of it, this is actually designed to protect the circuit. If you look, all the wires were intact, the circuit's fine. Once I replaced the capacitor, the generator started working. I'll find a place outside to mount this. I'm going to take you inside now. Okay, I'm not really clear on how this works. What I understand is these fields rotate, even though there's no electricity on there is a little voltage created, which puts a field on these wires, which creates your electricity. There are two diodes that you might want to check in circuit. Diode there and a diode there. If not, they're not working, you won't get the right output on it. And that's really about all you have to worry about on there. Check our wiring. There's our two orange wires. They just go into that group. And then the other two wires. I can't give you a value on those diodes. Can't even focus in on the darn things. Maybe we can add some still pictures to it. Well, locked out. One of the diodes is soldered in so that I get the part number off of it. Those are Motorola diodes. W8823. W8823. There you go. W8823. And all my new test diodes take them out of the circuit. I checked that polarity both ways with all the windings, it didn't make a difference. But this one is putting out electricity now up to 120 volts, so I'm leaving well enough alone. Okay, and there's one on each side of the uh, armature. Okay, let's try another little troubleshooting uh, tip, since we know this one's working. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and measure the impedance across uh, all the windings so we'll have those measurements uh, at least be able to help someone else this is a tim come in all right the rear cover is back on with the bearing uh, one thing i wanted to show you before i move on where the uh, two yellow wires came out for the capacitor is i'm going to be mounting out on the outside of the cabinet i wanted to make sure i got those pretty darn tight because before they were just mounted inside they were just mounted on the other side of this and there was no fatigue really on these wires outside i don't know where i'm going to go with this i'm probably going to mount the uh i'm probably going to mount the uh, capacitor up underneath the gas tank so i went ahead and took the time to uh drill a couple small holes in the case far enough in so that will take all the stress I'll take, stress off, take the stress off these wires back on the uh, windings. All right, I've removed the gas tank. I drained the oil out of it. I've, so I could turn it over and work on the bottom. They only had two, two uh, anti-vibration pads here. There was nothing here. That's so why I was using this board. Uh, the vibration pads, the way they're laid out. Let's make it a little closer. Yeah, the way they're laid out. There's a washer in there. That goes on there. Another washer on the other side. Then there's a sleeve. So it's isolated. The problem with this is, is that's the wrong size sleeve. It's way too big. Uh, when I measured the bottom of the deck to here, it's five eighths of an inch. And this is three quarters, so that's too big. But the theory is that's where it mounts. Now this one, this one is pulled completely through. The screws are pulled through, so putting another washer doesn't make any difference, and it's also dry rotted. 
regarding the 12 bolts you might be familiar with the uh, plug that actually came on this I looked on the internet could not find anything the other problem I was having is it was only put out seven and a half volts uh, I tore into it and like I said the schematic is attached below well, I found one diode one diode and I can put the spec I can put a spec in for that but since it's 10 amps just an diode that can handle 10 amps what I've decided to do is put a car adapter on it a cigarette adapter because almost everyone has one of those that way we're running a generator someone needs to charge their cell phone or anything 12 volts we've got that it is putting out 10 amps but to take it one step farther uh, add the cigarette lighter and added a full bridge rectifier on it when I ran this with a small rectifier on it it was coming out with a steady with 150 watts on it, a headlight with a high beam it was putting out 11 and a half volts and that was more than it was supposed to put out anyhow with that much of a load on it so that was doing real good I found a equation on the capacitor to smooth it out the DC I calculated 4,000 this one is a 3,000 and because I got it to local uh, Midwest surplus electronics I think it was like two dollars and I don't even know if the rectifier was two dollars and the cigarette lighter was two and a half dollars so I'll uh, go ahead and finish putting this together show you what it looks like and then do a run test The rest of this video just demonstrates how clean the voltage is with the capacitor in the circuit. The voltage was too high, so only the voltage regulator when I put that back in. Please check the description at the bottom for where I got the parts and a schematic for your own use. Good luck. Welcome back. We're ready to button up this project. Uh, this is all the previous clip I had the uh, one diode that was in the circuit like I said the schematic will be listed below the original schematic what I've done is replace that one diode with a full bridge rectifier one of the or original orange line is they had the diode now it's going to the rectifier the other orange line coming from the windings is going through the circuit breaker as before or from the circuit breaker to the other side the two AC hookups for the full bridge rectifier. Coming out of the rectifier you have DC and AC voltage. DC voltage is going through the capacitor which uses 3000 microfarad to smooth out the voltage. And it goes back to the cigarette lighter. Negative side of the rect bridge rectifier goes to the negative side of the capacitor and then around to the negative side of the cigarette lighter. Make sure when you use a filter in here it is electrolytic and it only goes in one way. If you get it backwards the pixies will get angry and this thing will blow up and you will have all kinds of stinky blue magic smoke coming out. We go ahead and put this thing back together and then we'll go ahead and do a voltage and line load test and you can see how it came out.
All right, I'm on Plan Bravo. I didn't bother videotaping and showing you. It was putting out way too much voltage. Apparently, by adding the capacitor, filter capacitor, we've made the circuit way too efficient, and the voltage was running close to 30 volts with no load on it, and about 25, it may drop down to about 19 with the load on it. So I just took the uh, filter capacitor back out of it, and the voltage drops down to 17 but the waveform is really ugly so depends how efficient you want to get i think i'm going to add a voltage regulator later just because i can and it's cheap uh before right now i'm going to go ahead and button this up and i will show you the final go on it <laughs> 